Hello everyone and welcome to today's Vicious and Dangerous Dog Hearings. Today's date is March 10, 2016. The hearing officer will be Mr. John Denny. I'm Sergeant Sherry Hicks, San Francisco Police Department Vicious and Dangerous Dog Unit. Also in attendance from San Francisco Animal Care and Control is Lieutenant Amy Corso and Sergeant Ellie Sadler. We have two hearings scheduled for today. They will be in this order. First case is dog owner Allison Lee, dog tank, A number 382563, complainant, San Francisco Animal Care Control, SFPD. Next case is dog owner Michelle Murray, dog Ellie, A number 377962, complainant is Alina Davenport, regarding her dog, Lola. Should be noted that this case was is a continuation from November the 5th, 2015. That is the uh, uh, Murray case with... Correct. Okay. Okay, it appears that all the parties uh, involved have signed in. First case, Dog owner, Allison Lee, dog tank, A382563. In this case file, you will find SFPD incident report number 160076927. Statements for one or more involved parties, San Francisco Animal Care and Control Records. Uh, photos, photos for identification. And notice of hearing letters. All right, thank you, Sergeant. Good afternoon and welcome to all of you here and thank you for your patience and finding parking. I know that couldn't have been much fun. Um, let's see, oh, and before we get started. Cell phones. Yes, and the reason I make that announcement is the last person that violated that policy was myself. So <laughs> I had to give everybody in the courtroom 10 minutes to make all the phone calls they wanted to. So please uh, put it on vibrate if you could or, or turn it off. So starting out, um, I have looking through a file here regarding Miss Lee's dog tank. And I believe the complainant is uh, San Francisco Animal Care and Control. And I believe, Sergeant, you are representing Animal Care and Control in this. Would you mind taking the stage and letting me know what's going on? Hello. Hello. So um, I responded to a emergency call on January 27th, I believe. The, the call I got was that there was a dog with wire wrapped around its neck, choking to death. So I responded in a hurry, naturally. Um, and when I arrived on scene, it was a, a dog training facility. Uh, and the owner was on scene and she was hysterical and there was a young man who had some bandages on him who I didn't, didn't stop to speak to because I was under the impression there was a dying dog. So I ran through the premises. When I got to the back, I discovered uh, a bathroom door wedged shut with a crate and a come-along handle sticking out. Okay. Um, and when I looked, and they said we locked him in the, we locked him in the bathroom, and I didn't, still really, wasn't really sure what was going on. Anyway, I looked in the bathroom and I saw a dog on a come along with a pool of blood, a significant amount of blood on the, on the floor, and the dog was um, dripping blood from the mouth and was hyperventilating and was obviously quite panicked. And then I realized that it was just a come along that was on the dog. It wasn't this mysterious wire, but the come along was broken and I couldn't take it off oh. to protect the dog. Um, I so, then, so you grabbed the come along and tried to release yeah, the tension. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, it's just a come along. <laughs> right. And, okay. You know, I guess the dog bit its tongue, and then I tried to remove the come along, but I couldn't because it was non-functional. It was broken. Okay. Um, I discovered later that it actually wasn't broken. Somebody had had just 
taken it apart without realizing it. Obviously, they tried to take the come along off or done something to it and had disabled it. Um, but I discovered that later after we cut it off. Okay. Um, anyway, so I brought the dog in. The owner was still there. The dog was responsive to the owner, but was moderately aggressive to me. I mean, I went to pet him and he tried to bite me. Um, but it was with the owner. He was okay. He was at, scared. Okay, so at, s let's go back to where you tried to release the come along. You couldn't release the come along. How did you get the dog away out of the come along? Well, it uh, <laughs> ended up taking quite a long time. So I removed the dog from the bathroom. We went into a room with the owner so the dog would be calmer. Okay. And I explained to the owner that while it looked horrific, the injury probably wasn't that bad. Um, so I got her to calm down, I got the dog to calm down, and then I used my come along and put it over the broken come along. Then we had to call the fire department with wire cutters to cut the oh. broken come along off the dog. Okay. Um, which was, you know, moderately concerning just because we had to put, somebody had to put their hands next to the dog's face to take the old come along off. Right. And I couldn't do that because I was holding the come along to keep the dog secure. So it was um, something of a mess. I then found out, I was talking to the, the owner about what had happened and she told me that um, they were training the dog. And I, I use that word loosely because it sounds to me like it's a fairly aggressive method of training. Um, and she said that the dog had jumped up on her in a friendly way and the person training the dog had grabbed the leash and yanked it and the dog turned around and then attacked the <coughs> person Who in grabbed charge. The leash. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so the dog was being corrected? Do you, do you think that was the case? Yeah, I, I yeah. The dog, dog was being corrected. Yeah. For, probably for jumping up. Right. And um, the correction didn't go so well. That's my okay. understanding of okay. it. And then the owner told me that the dog is on multiple medications um, for anxiety and, and stress. And it, it just sounds to me like this is a dog on the edge of his coping skills and is now being assaulted and finally snapped. So I feel very strongly that this is a dog that has been backed into a corner and while he's probably got some pretty significant emotional difficulties based on the medical history, he was forced to respond through primal urges. All right, let's, let's talk about, so you got the fire department there, so you're in the room with the owner of the dog and the dog's under duress because it's probably tighter yeah. than the dog would want. And uh, how long were you in that room until the fire department got there? 15, 20 minutes maybe. So it was a little while. The dog was not in any immediate okay. danger. It wasn't choking. Okay. The come along was on tight enough. So you were able to calm the dog down and um, although <laughs> Ish, he still wasn't a, a cuddly yeah. situation. I, but you didn't feel in, dangerous, in, in any danger while you're waiting for the um, uh, fire department. No, I mean, I was ha had hold of two come alongs at that point, so uh, the dog was no danger to anybody at that uh, point, unless they put their hands in his, in his mouth. Um, but he was definitely pretty emotional. When he tried to bite you, did you, were you reaching towards him? Or? Yeah, I just went to pat, pet him on the back. Oh, okay. And I knew he couldn't reach me because I had the come along, but I went to pet him to see what he'd do. Yeah. And he whipped around and okay. tried to bite me. And I was like, okay, right, so no worries. Probably a bad mood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the fire department comes, they reach in and they, they clip the come along. Yeah. You've got your come along on it. And then what, what did you do with the dog at that point? And then at that point, the dog was transferred into a, a kennel. Um, a, a, a largest kennel okay. uh, and was waiting on the veterinarian to arrive to be checked out due to all the blood loss. I figured that there was a broken tooth or a chunk of tongue missing. There was something going on in his mouth. That's where all the blood was coming from. So uh, our veterinarian was responding to the training the, facility? Yes. So the owner of the training facility arrived, said he'd called a mobile vet and they showed up and I ah, confirmed later okay. that the mobile vet did show up but they didn't look in the dog's mouth because they couldn't really look in the dog's mouth because it's an aggressive dog. Okay. And they didn't I, I knock him out. I so, understand. I understand. Um, you know, I, I, my major concern is that this dog was forced to respond in such a manner after being abused and somebody was using a tool that they didn't know how to use to correct it. Okay. And I'm, you know, I think it's important. I think this dog is, may well be a jeopardy to others. 
but he also was forced into into the situation. So your argument is that we're dealing with provocation. Absolutely. I, yes. And, no you, doubt and so you're arguing that the, the dog, or it's your opinion that the dog was provoked into the behavior. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, how did you leave the situation? How, how did that all? So I left. I left the situation with the the owner was on scene, the vet was on their way, and things were going to be resolved. In that respect, the dog was going to be quarantined at home or at the kennels. Now, prior to the uh, tank being uh, put in the Kamalong that didn't work, it, 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 I, someone got bit. Can you can explain to me what you know about someone was bitten by tank? Uh, the original victim. The reason yeah, I got called. was this after the correction. Uh, my understanding is yes. So the the owner of the dog was very upset. So I don't know how linear the information I got was. Okay. Um, but she had said that the the person had yanked the leash and then tank had turned and bitten them on the arm, and then I guess they'd fallen back and fallen down and then he bit them on the chest. And there was okay. a number of, I think there was a number of bite wounds um, okay. before somebody ran, got the come along, and got the dog on a come along. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a nasty situation there. And that's, um, well, let's get to the bottom of it. And, uh, uh, the purpose of this hearing is to determine whether Tank is a vicious and dangerous dog. So that, that's, uh, <coughs> that's going to be the focus. It, um, I'm not going to get into the training methods or, 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 or how things were handled. I, I'm focusing on Tank. So uh, is there anything else you would like to add? No. Okay. Thank well, you. then, uh, thank you. And uh, I appreciate you hanging around, okay. uh, we may have to rebut some of your statements. Okay, no worries. Okay. Okay. So I would like to um, recommend that we watch uh, a video uh, that I prepared using footage and photos from uh, the dog owner, uh, Miss Allison Lee, and uh, the um, owner, co-owner of uh, Dan Peralta training facility because uh, she uh, forwarded me video clips from security cameras uh, in the kennels. Okay, well, uh, bef before we do that, uh, thought just occurred to me, and Sergeant, I'm still gonna ask you a, a question. You can you can answer from uh, from there. Um, Animal care and control is requesting a hearing to determine whether or not Tank is a vicious and dangerous dog. Your contention is that Tank was provoked into uh, his reaction that uh, uh, started the bite. Your reason for requesting the hearing then is to clear Tank? Or I, I <laughs> I, do you see the point I'm trying to make? I, I do. So my, my concern is is that Tank is something of a loose cannon. He's, he's a, I don't know if high strung, I'm not sure what the right word is, but he's on the cusp. By my understanding, the owner is medicating him heavily. She's done a number of training sessions with him. She's had him since he was little, and this is sort of a last resort training situation for him. So I think that he is possibly trouble. But I also think that this event was provoked. So, not to put words in your mouth, what your wishes are is that perhaps Tank not be put through this type of training again in yes. order to provoke a violent reaction. Right. Is, is that? Yes, because I haven't met Tank outside of that situation. Okay. So I don't know what he's like on a normal basis, but this is concerning that he would... So you know, Tank is a dog that bit somebody, uh, uh, I'll find out how many times, um, but you're saying that uh, Tank was provoked but you're requesting the hearing maybe to come with the, uh, so this doesn't happen again. Is that, is yeah, that safe to say? To, to establish the paper trail of the history in case things do start happening okay. again and to, yeah. To, All right, I, yeah. Yeah, I think I got it. Okay, it's, it's a little unusual yeah. uh, uh, on this case. Okay, Sergeant, please. 
So uh, I will ask, I recommend that we see the video first because uh, it will res refresh in everyone's memory, not that it's a, a fun thing to watch again. And certainly if anybody is uh, uh, squeamish or feels they're going to be upset by it, to, they can go ahead and step out of the room. Uh, it's not a close-up type um, graphic uh, photos of, of you know, um, visible blood and that kind of thing. It's a security stationary uh, cameras that were, you know, used at the facility. Um, and I appreciate that they were sent to me um, as... Um, By whom? Indica indication as... Um, I have her name in the file there, but she's a co-owner and the oh, school okay. manager. Oh, okay. So this was the training facility. Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. Uh, I, I believe that they uh, were obviously after an incident like this occurred concerned as well to not have a repeat okay. uh, and learn use this all the the entire the entirety of the incident uh, including the come along not being properly functioning at that time to be able to, to release the uh, tank. Okay. Um, so uh, she did provide me with that footage um, and I cut it shorter for expediency and of course for everyone here in the room, but it's uh, definitely um, pretty clear what transpired and it certainly seems that uh, Tank was definitely excitable from uh, the get-go when he saw his owner, who he obviously is very fond of. Okay. Um, so I'm going to play the video and uh, just on Sergeant uh, Sadler's note, um, I know that uh, Tank has now uh, got a big backyard of his own to live in, um, which is uh, is great for any dog. Um, so she's uh, recently bought a house, and so hopefully that'll help give him more room to play around and, and safe uh, confinement as well for the future moving forward. Okay. And there is no sound. That's tank? Nope. Okay. Didn't look like the mugshot that I have. So that's Aaron on the... The gentleman that was... Uh, okay. Okay, so he's jumping up. Yeah, I, yeah okay. I, I can see where some training is warranted. Oh, geez. Yeah. Use a uh, different camera angle. Mr. Yu is the one that obviously gets the uh, retrieves to come along. Well, that's, I'm encouraged that the, the attack is over and okay, not happy about that. That's the bathroom where you found him.
So at some point, Allison does call 911, and she can let us know when that was. Okay. is a repeat and it's just in slow motion because it happened very quickly so so this is from the original where they enter off screen on the left of the screen right and so this is where tank is picked up as you could see well and that's really he's really got a good latching on there I'm not positive and I believe that uh, that can get clarified today but it certainly seems that after that correction was made uh, that he really the fight was on like it, yeah. can you can you replay that just j just like a, a few frames before yeah I did I made still frames okay so still frames. so there's a dogs up he's picked down he's put down but prior to that point was was the dog because I mr. Kasarchuk had to he was trying to interrupt tank from jumping up I I just like to be very clear on that right bef before he made the correction uh, uh, of putting a uh, tank on the ground can you can you show me that just one more time or Are you looking for whether he was on a lead no I want to see the point where mr. Kasarchuk first made contact with with tank because the, uh, I think that was pretty much in the beginning part. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll see when when the kennel is first open. Yeah, that that's fine. Yeah, actually, that 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 would be fine. <coughs> uh, I'll just play it from the beginning because it happens very soon. Because I'm not sure at this point whether Tank can see Allison from outside. I'm not sure we can clarify that, but. She's, she looks pretty happy, and it looks like she's calling to him. Her peers are saying hi. To so he comes out, and he's jumping on her. Right. So he's aware that that mom's outside. Okay. There okay. So so all right. So okay. Ramdas says, yeah. really not worried about Mr. Kasarchek at this point. And then, uh, well, no. He starts pushing back, snapping, but I don't see con there's contact made just there. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think the hostilities, it off right. but I, I, it, the, uh, it looks like the hostilities happened before he corrected them on the ground. Started, but it exacerbated. Well, I, 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 I could see, but um, uh, all right, okay. I, th I think I can. Definitely I, <coughs> lunging towards him. It, it, it appears to me that when he tried to intervene or step between. When he tried to get between uh, Tank and Allison, that's what it looks like to me. Is that a taser that's being used? I wanted to ask you, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. I think I got the gist. Let's keep it queued up, but uh, you, yeah. you, you can freeze it or. Uh... Well. Um... And that would be by. The other employee and not uh, Aaron. Okay. So why don't I talk? How about uh, Miss Lee? Are you here? Yeah. Hi. Why don't you come down? Tough day, huh? Yeah. All right. Hi. So Hi. thank you for coming down. Yeah. All right. Um, you, you, I, we've just seen what we've seen here. Uh, from your recollection, what, what happened? Okay, so I submitted a statement 
that um, reinforces this. But basically, I've had Tank since he was very little. He's always had anxiety problems. I got him on medication a long time ago for just anxiety and just high energy all the time. So um, a couple months ago, probably about six months ago, my roommates just started having a lot more parties and there just started to be a lot more people and energy and like strangers in the house and he became like obviously um, anxious and I started becoming concerned that he was going to ha beca develop aggressive behavior. Ha had he lunged at anybody or no, just growled? No, growling, barking. He ran outside and barked at some people coming up the stairs in an aggressive way um, and I just wanted to get ahead of it and make sure that nothing happened. So Dan Parada is has been Tank's trainer before. I completely trust him and his training facility so much so that I moved Tank semi-permanently to his training facility while I looked for a new house to live in that had a yard and didn't have a bunch of people and that wouldn't be provoking Tank with strangers and high energy and things like that. He had been living at this facility for months, probably two months when this incident happened. I went every single day for training sessions with Dan and Aaron, Natasha. They, I completely trust and believe believe in everything that they are doing at the facility and I uh, maintain that to this day and this particular incident um, one of Dan's main cornerstones of training is that a lot it's not the dog it's me and so that I really need to make sure that when I'm around tank I'm confident and assertive and not letting him jump up on me and not giggling and pulling back like I was in the video and so I think that because I didn't follow the instructions that he told me on that particular day and because Tank was loose, he wasn't on a leash as you can see, he just like busted out of the crate and was jumping around. I think that just it was kind of like a one-off situation because like I said, we, I had been going in daily for training sessions with Aaron and Dan for months every day in the same situation. So I think that this, this particular incident, he was just really, really high energy anxiety. He got out, he jumped up on me and I didn't correct him in the way that I had been trained to by Dan and Aaron and I think when Aaron stepped in Tank misperceived that as a threat and that's why he attacked him. Um, I don't I don't think that. How, how long has Mr. Kasarczyk been working with uh, Tank? He's been working with him the entire the entire time that I've been working. So Weeks, two months, months? Two months. Two probably, months. Over two months. Three months maybe. So Tank knew who Mr. Kasarczyk was and what his role is. It wasn't, yes. was, wasn't a stranger. Yes. Okay. But, um, and so I don't know exactly the dynamics of what particularly happened that day that was different, except for the fact that I wasn't being as assertive as I should have been. And normally the training sessions are more controlled, where he's on a leash out of the crate and then we take him to another, like, designated training area. This was kind of, like, when he escaped out of the crate and wasn't on a leash immediately, it kind of just was a situation that everyone couldn't control, but I'm taking responsibility for not following the orders that they told me to do um, while I was working with them. And I honestly think it was just a one-off incident because as you can see in the video, he calms down and Aaron is holding him by his leash, not trying, like holding him right here by his collar in the video. He's completely calm, not trying to attack him or anything. And then even further than that, Tank stayed at the facility for another month after this happened, working with Aaron and Dan every day and with no incident until I was able to find a house, which I just did a week ago and moved him into. How's he been at the He's new house? He's been fantastic. So great, Is so he, calm. He has a yard, he can go in and out. No one else lives there. It's There's not a bar or a pet store or like, you know, all the stuff that was under the apartment that I used to live in. It's in a really calm neighborhood. It's near a park. He's completely turned around. He's been really, really great. Is he still on medication? Yeah, he takes Prozac every day just for the anxiety. That, that, that's been for years okay. um, since he was like a year and a half or two. The vet prescribed that to me. Um, and that's just something that I'm just going to keep up because I, under the understanding that Prozac kind of like you have to take it regularly for it to have the effect that it's supposed to. Okay. Well, you obviously love your dog very much. And uh, uh, so, is there something you'd like to add right now? You, you'd be welcome to come back up, but I, I think I really need to talk to Mr. Kasarja. Yeah, I just, I mean, I just want to say that Dan, Natasha, and Aaron have been nothing short of wonderful in helping me with the situation, and I completely back their training methods, and they've 
no one else has offered to help me with the situation in the way that they have. Um, I believe that they're really, really professional and this was just a one-off incident that yeah, maybe wasn't handled well with the equipment, but that, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that that's the, really the point of it. I think the point of it is that they understand that, I, that Tank has an issue and they've been helping me work through it and... Excuse me, but why wouldn't anybody else help you with this? I, I just mean like if I go to call any other facilities and say like I have a pit bull, I'm worried about aggression issues. There's not a lot of other facilities you can Google okay. online right, that will so. that are like reaching out and actively offering to get ahead of behavior issues with aggressive dogs like they are. There's just I mean I I don't know for a fact I didn't call around, but I like just Googled it and this is the one that is like openly going out and trying to help dogs like this. So it's not a case of you taking tank to other behaviorists and they're saying no, no, not no. on a bet. And no, I actually okay. haven't taken him to anyone else. I took him to Dan years ago for a first initial consult based on his Yelp reviews and was completely happy with just within one lesson with the head caller. He made me feel more in control of tank. He taught me about the concepts and the way that I need to think about things and it's been extremely effective and I truly believe that the reason this happened was because of extraneous factors with Tank ending up living in an anxiety filled environment and then me moving him permanently to a facility and he didn't understand what, like, why he wasn't going home and how, how long stuff. was he at the facility? In total I, I, I mean up to this point up until this point, it was like, I, I want to say like two months and then a month after, so three months total. Okay, so when he saw you, um, had, you've, you'd been visit. When I go was visit every day and do lessons pretty okay. much every day or like, le more than once a week. So he'd seen you the day before, Tank had seen you the day before? Th so this particular incident, I have been taking him on the weekends um, okay. to work with him because per the Dan Camp um, aggressive dog rehabilitation program. They recommend that he stays there during the week and then goes and works on skills with the owner on the weekends. So I had taken him on the weekend and brought him back and I think just the fact that I had had him for the weekend and then brought him back and then left and then come back maybe would have had some, had a, that could have factored well, that, into Well, that, that puts stress yeah. on the dog, I'm yeah. sure. Let me ask you this. In, uh, at your apartment prior to moving and you had roommates um, and uh, if Tank could run up and jump on you, do you think if another roommate had said, no, no, Tank, get off her, like that, that Tank would have acted? I can't the same say way? that for sure. Has, did ta has Tank ever? No, he has not. Been corrected by a roommate or any? The anybody? Roommate, my roommates have gone in for lessons with Dan okay. and Aaron um, in the past. All of them have actually gone in and learned to learn how to work with him. Um, and they're also have they also have submitted statements um, to Sergeant Hicks. Um, I I honestly I don't think that he would have attacked anyone in my home ever. I really honestly think that this was a one-off case where he was just extremely high anxiety and not in a controlled environment and confused about just why he was being moved around and why he was like living in that facility but he doesn't live there anymore none of those things are a factor anymore okay all right thank, thank you. you thank you and uh, mr kasarchuk wow tough day at the office huh it's part of the job huh <laughs> Oh, no, I, I've been in some scrapes, uh, you know, my career as a police officer, and uh, that that's, uh, w what's your perception of what happened? So, uh, Wednesday, January 27th, uh, Allison had an appointment with me at 9.30 in the morning to work with Tank. Right. At that point, Tank had been with us for eight weeks, as I had it on my charts. Um, we had been working with him for quite a while. I had gotten a little comfortable with him, working with him to the point where I thought that he wouldn't be so excited when we took him out of his kennel. So, um, would it be okay if we pulled up that video again? So I sure, go. sure. You talking to me? Oh, would you mind? Or? Um, I'll play it kind of from the beginning because okay. I don't have like morphers. Oh, okay. That's okay. It's government equipment. Yeah. So Tank is in an enclosed kennel. Uh, you'll notice I flip up an orange flap. So he can definitely smell Allison when she walks in the room and she engages him and says, hi, Tank. And then I flip that orange flap over to pull him out of his kennel and I pull the two pins. And if you notice, I'm just shutting the door in his face. As that's how we work on teaching the dog's patience and stay. I, I, it's not, I just saw something entirely different on the, on the video. So, uh, um, 
So it's in the first instance before he even jumps out of the kennel. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, Sergeant, if you could rewind it just a bit so we can see what... Uh... Oh, you're old. Rewind it. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fun. That's... Yes, I am. Let's get the old tape out. So then I flip up the orange flap, so oh, now you can see her. Right. She's already engaged him verbally. Okay. So now, right there when I'm moving my uh, left arm, as I'd already flipped the pins of the kennel, I haven't opened the door, but I'm telling him stay. As he tries to burst out, before I've given him the okay command to come in, he's very excited, he wants to burst out. I close it twice in his face and he stops. The third time I open it, I tell him stay. He muscles through before I can get the leash that's in my right hand on his collar. So he breaks away from me before I can put a lead on him. Okay. So then he starts jumping on her, and I try to coach Allison to get him to jump down. She tries a couple verbal commands of down, and they prove to be ineffective. So this is when he comes after you the first time? Yeah. So I try to intervene and reach underneath his chin to grab his collar, and he immediately starts going for my hands. And so... Then he starts at t lunging at me, and I'm backing away to try and get my footing and assess the situation and try and correct him. And then so he engages. Uh, the first bite he got was on my, um, like you saw, I'm backing away, yeah. and he gets me on the uh, left side of my abdomen. And then um, after that, once he starts like going again and again, I engage him and I try and pin him, which was when I was throwing him down on his right. side with his legs facing away from me. And uh, as I did not have a grasp on his collar, then he broke away, started biting my arm. Then that's the point where he shook. And then um, I called for my employee, Ivan, to grab that is a taser to crack it. And the ionization in the air is usually just enough for the dog to stop and take a look. So he was tased? Is that why he's coming? He, he was not tased. It was cracked in the air, not it was like so at he, him, he but he it. was not touched. Okay. So he's calmed down to the point where you can grab him by the collar, right? Well, what I did was he was still coming at me, so I grabbed his collar and twisted it so he would stop. And as he calmed down more, I relieved pressure so that he would just stay there. But since I was bleeding profusely from my right arm from the puncture wound and trying to you know, assess the situation is what happened. Um, Allison was in hysterics at the time, so I'm trying to call my employee to call for help. Um, I have, I'm trying to call out for her to, you know, take her to a different room, get her to calm down, and then I'm trying to assess the damage to myself because I was under the impression that I had just been bitten on a major artery. Okay, so you're bitten on the left arm? Uh, right arm. Right arm. And um, puncture wounds? Two puncture wounds. Two puncture wounds. And they're ble bleeding profusely? Uh, not as profusely as tank, but yeah. Okay. Constant flow stream that didn't stop bleeding for about 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, the abdomen, prior to your attempt to pin him, mm -hmm. you were bitten as you were backing up. Yeah. And he, he got you on the abdomen. He did, but it was a nick, so as soon as I was um, assessed for that one, they just close up. It's totally fine. <laughs> Close it up. Well, I mean, let it heal naturally. So there was no. It was a very minor scratch compared to the bite that I had received. Okay. So that was allowed to heal naturally as long as I covered it up and just kept it clean. That so it was a deep extra scratch tension. as opposed to a uh, not not a deep scratch, wound. a light scratch. <laughs> All right, well, it, uh, okay. Well, I, w I was wearing three layers of clothing, so it could have been worse. Yeah, okay. I, I get the picture. Well, golly, um, what are your thoughts on this? What, 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 what the... We had been working with Allison for about eight weeks at that time, and she has in the past demonstrated that she can get him under control, but not in a uh, high energy situation such as that. So I believe that if Allison cannot prove that she can get Tank under control in a situation with that kind of energy and that demeanor, then I do not feel that they are right for each other. Okay. Um... Had you considered requesting a vicious and dangerous dog hearing on tank? No. G generally, in, in cases like this, you would be the complainant, mm. not animal care and control. Uh, so, um, do you think that uh, tank is a vicious and dangerous dog? I think under specific circumstances, yes, especially between when someone gets in between Allison and Tank because they have a very specific attachment and that's the reason why he was brought into my work is because he has had aggression issues in the past towards other people getting in, in between Allison and Tank. Has, and, and in those cases, has Al, uh, Tank made contact with any of those people getting between? Uh, myself, yes. Um, 
usually I would uh, myself or Dan, my boss, would be the one working with her, but he would usually be on a lead or on a head collar, which is like a horse salty sort of thing. Okay, so but uh, the the history, just to the best of your knowledge, the history has tank um, been uh, has someone gotten between. Um, Tank and Allison that Tank has uh, gone after? Uh, to my knowledge, I was told that Tank had come in because he had attacked someone else. I cannot confirm that. Do, do we have any record from animal care control of uh, anything prior to that? Okay. Uh, so, what, what, what would be your recommendation? You, you told me that absent Miss Lee being able to get control of Tank in a situation such as this. I'm sorry, if, can you repeat that? Um, absent Miss, if Miss Lee can't get control of Tank when things go sideways, mm -hmm. then you don't believe they're a good fit. I believe that if she cannot get him under control in a situation where he is not responding to verbal commands, especially when he's not on a lead, then I believe he will hurt someone again. Okay. All right. And that's about as bad as it gets, don't you think? I would say so, yeah. I believe someone who did not have my level of training would not be able to handle that situation as followed. Well, I, I really have to commend you on, I, I think, um, uh, uh, sticking to it, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not an animal behaviorist, but I, you know there is a tendency to get out of the room and shut the door. But you stuck with it and uh, eventually got the dog under control after having been bitten twice. Um, I, that's uh, uh, well, that, that's certainly commendable. Um, well, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, that is all. Okay. Uh, why don't you have a seat? Um, is there anybody else that wanted to say something regarding this incident or this case? Please come up. Hi, and your name? Natalie Tucker. Okay, Ms. Tucker, what? I'm a good friend of Allison's, also a good friend of Tank's. Known the dog since he was about a year old. Um, and I've definitely seen him be protective of his mother in the past. Um, I've also seen him be a wonderful friend to all of Allison's friends and roommates. How protective? What does he do to be protective um, of his mother? Just in fact that like, I think that if people enter in the facility, that he'll look to Allison first to see if it's like, it's, it's okay. Um, I'll also see if someone... Um, tries to be aggressive to her, he'll definitely like make a noise, you know, in any way. Um, but I've never seen the dog attack anybody else. And, uh, you know, especially me, myself, being a small woman and, and a lot of females being around Allie, um, you can imagine that a dog who has a very strong connection to its mother is also protective of him towards, of her towards a lot of, around a lot of the women. Just me, myself, knowing a lot of the other alpha males who are tied to a female. Um, the dog is a good friend to my friend Kelsey's, who is also here, um, a good friend to every one of those people that still enters those ho that home that um, she talked about that she's leaving. Um, and I can I can myself get in Tink's face and wrestle with him and, and be very friendly, and he's never growled at me once um, or gone after me in any aggressive manner. I do think that... Um, Maybe when Aaron says, okay, if there's not a trained professional to actually arrest the dog, that'd be one thing if there was a scenario that was a high energy, really intense scenario like that. Um, but general friends that will come into that house, and again, there have been a lot of people that are in and out of that old apartment that she moved out of. I have never seen him once go after a person. I've always seen Allie be able to tell him, Tank, you know, get down um, and be very, him be very responsive to that. We took him on a Tahoe trip most recently where he was in an unfamiliar environment. I had three of my own friends come into that house that he had never met before and he listened to Allison perfectly when she said butt on the rug is his sort of command and he gets on the rug and he sits there and doesn't doesn't interfere with anyone. Even when they try to pet him as soon as she says you know um, take butt on the rug he will completely obey her commands and I've never seen the dog 
be aggressive towards another human in a way that he flares his teeth or barks or or gets that angry in any manner. Have Have you ever did Tank ever get out of the uh, old apartment? He's, like, yeah, they're he, in a new apartment right now. No, but I mean, uh, on his own. Has he ever escaped, gotten out the front door and been on the street? Or I've never seen him get on the street, no. Interact like that? And that's my knowledge, no. What, what do you think he would do if he got out uh, and found himself on a street? If he got, if Tank got onto the street, he would run and roll around in the park across the street is what he would do. I don't think there's any way that Tank would go up to another human in any sort of scenario and upset them. I've seen Tank run around on the beach before. I've seen him run around in a park. I've seen him interact with plenty of other dogs in a scenario where he's completely off leash and she has no command over him. When she's sitting on the sidelines and Tank's interacting with other dogs or people even, um, I've seen him off leash plenty of times where he's had a great time. Tahoe trips, we went to Santa Cruz on time. He went on an entire Pogon Up Trail run and there were other people running and crossing him where he didn't even run up to sniff them. Would you be worried, after watching this video, would you be worried about Tank's behavior? I've seen the video, and I've seen Tank um, snarl before when, again, when Allison's like in a high stress scenario where she's anxious because he's meeting other people and his energy can sometimes be tied to her. So I understand what they're saying at, at one point. But I've never seen him ever show his teeth to another human. I've never seen him be aggressive in that way. Um, so I do see that as someone stepping in to intervene. Where, where Aaron comes in and, and tanks off leash and Allie's excited and she's, like she said, not, not behaving the way she should have, he stepped in as another to control that sort of interaction and I've never seen another person try to engage with them in that same way. Okay. Um, she lives with three other guys who are very, um, he's very responsive to them as well too. So he listens to their commands and I know that there are other folks besides her that are able to have their behavior tied to Tank and, and who he's also responsive to. Um, so again, in my opinion, Tank is an anxious dog and they, I think that since she, for the last two years, you know, or whenever it was that um, Allie realized that, she took the right steps to do that. And since the um, scalability of the, the party scene at that house has sort of grown due to um, an addition of some roommates and some friends and things like that, she's obviously taken great lengths to control that behavior and to um, account for that. Okay. Um, that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Is there anyone else? Like your shirt. That's. I could talk. I, I'm, it's humorous, though, right? Yeah. It's okay. One of, the, one of the bigger rescues around Pocket Dog. So I'm Dan Parada, owner of the facility, co-owner with my wife Natasha back here. Um, could we take a look at the video really quick? One sure. More time. Sergeant Hicks is here to serve. <laughs> Thanks. Actually, some of the stuff that Aaron did was perfect. He didn't engage the dog. Didn't touch to the dog. Well, our problem in lives with Tank and is Allison and being able to control Tank. I think Aaron's pretty dead on when he uh, um, wants to see her be able to control him. And she hadn't up until this point. She made a lot of big mistakes. Well, we made some big mistakes too, letting her be back here in the training area. All the whole fronts for training. But when Allison, the whole time, her whole body language just says she shouldn't have been looking for Tank. She should have waited for Tank. We've gone through this time and time again on how to get him to calm down in this situation. And um, if you notice the whole time, you know, she was giggling and laughing here where we really started to run into trouble. And Aaron actually started to get the attack right about there, right when he reached for the collar. Right. And he, which, you know, it's a pretty tough, that's a fight, he's in it. Well, that's a pressed attack. That that's, is not that, a warning bite, that you know, is not that a is, warning. That's a full on attack. That's when dogs attack, yeah. And if it had been someone other than Aaron or yourself, I, I, I think the things could have been much, much worse. Well, there's, we have 14 employees at our facility and everybody's handle tank. Everybody. Like, I <laughs> had to handle them like that? No, that was that was rare that Tank went off like that. It, most of that was from Allison's fault. It was, truthfully, when the way she came in, she knew not to look. She's bent over in a weak position. She came in with her keys and her phone in her hand, wearing sandals as well. 
we've been through that not to come in come in to walk dogs and and move them he's calm here it's uh nobody else was it was uh that, that was a bad day but we learned a lot at our facility from it we use it as a training video everybody's seen it we've walked through it time and time again see what what went right and what went wrong is this in your opinion is this a dangerous dog no he's not he's uh he's a dog that was in the wrong house for the long time he had three other guys that lived there that kind of bossed him around there go 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 at the house constantly uh or allison was trying to find a place and to make sure the tank didn't lose it um he came down here with us he, he's never shown this aggression you know in the past not, not to myself or aaron that was the first full-on attack it, it allison uh, the biggest problem that we're having with tank was that is allison lets her emotions fly into the body language of tank and she gets it wrong most of the time so uh we've been planning on working as soon as she found the house with the backyard to go put tank in this situation myself some of her friends to redo a high energy situation because that's where he'll guard the best is at the new house well that now you're bringing territorial issues uh no, not necessarily. Into the equation. You can't leave it up to the dog for who, who puts the territory. <laughs> I, I see that ten times every yeah. week yeah. Here, sitting here. But. Yeah. It's not the dog's choice there. So, you know, we've been working with Allison. She's made some great improvements. Tank, you know, I think this, I really do believe it was a one-off. I think uh, the way the situation unfolded, Nobody uh, on my side, we did, nobody did anything wrong that I can tell. You know, Aaron, would, in a fight like that, you're fighting for your life, you know. Well, it, it just appeared to me that the dog was happy and going for its owner and then was interrupted and then launched a uh, sustained a, a attack on the well, person interrupting it. And yeah, so Tank came out and was hitting Allison at full force which is not a good thing right that's not i'm super happy to see you attitude what, 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 when what, a dog hits you full force like that what, what does it imply aggression it's it's him watch if you watch or if we re, redo the video if you don't mind watch how he comes out at full driving on allison i i i saw that yeah i i, I saw that uh, it's uh Aaron did great. He didn't, he didn't intervene. He didn't reach down. He didn't kick, hit, or, you know, he just tried to detour the dog while coaching Allison. She's the one that needed to be able to get this dog under control right here. I don't think he'll attack again. I really don't. And I work with a lot of aggressive dogs. If Allison can keep it together, and that's what we work on. We don't work on just the dog. We work on Allison and the owners as well. Suffer cooler demeanor when dealing with the dog so the reason for this outburst from tank was refresh my memory why do you think this happened because he had three or four young men that were bossing him around at the house as well as allison well but see now now we're talking about putting the dog on the couch and trying to find out what the uh, this tank was in a kennel and released from a kennel. Right. He's probably not thinking about the three guys at the house because he hadn't been there for a while, right? Well, yes, but no, he'd been there for years. They've been all But, but I mean, in, in the recent days. Oh, yeah, off and on for, yeah, a couple months. Okay, so I'd have to jump to the conclusion that he's still stewing on the fact of how he was with the three other guys and that, that he was pondering that as he was let out of the cage. That's kind of a joke. No, they don't, they don't think like that. They I, ponder, yeah. yeah. So he, at this it's, moment it's in time, he sees his owner and wants to go charge his owner. Right. Uh... That's, that's any, so when a dog gets into that situation, if you can't control it verbally and you can't leash it up fast enough, 
Right. Then you're going to run into problems. And she's been working on it and doing a great job other than that time. Well, I can tell you if this had happened in public and uh, Mr. Kasarczyk wasn't a trained professional in, in a training facility, uh, we'd be having a real different discussion right now. Uh, He's actually, he does better in public. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I have to say that's terrifying. That is a dog attack. That is a full-on attack. That is a, a, a full-on yeah. uh, attack. So knowing that uh, what, what Tank is capable of, uh, and that was in a controlled environment. I have seven or eight dogs just like Tank down there on any given month trying to fix it. And we fix this problem all the time. I fix this problem all the time with nothing more than a head collar. So many words. You will be continuing to uh, work with Miss Lee yep. on this. Do you ever get to the point where it it's just not going to work? No, yeah, there's been about five, five or six dogs that I just knew I couldn't. There's no way. Okay, yeah. and, and so you've had to have those dogs destroyed. Absolutely. How far away is Tank from that? He's a long ways from that. Really? Yeah, he's a long ways from that. Tank does great outdoors. He, he does great. Uh, it, high stress, coming back and forth from her place and everybody in charge of the tank, in and out of here, right, home and working, uh, all high stress is what it was. That, was. that was partially our bad for letting Allison be back at the kennels when we have other rooms for waiting we bring everybody in, they could sit down, much more controlled environment. Okay, well this is kind of a, uh, all right. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add? Okay, thank you. Sergeant, had you seen this video before? No, I'd not. Now that you've seen this video, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm, I'm quite angry that a dog was forced into that kind of reaction. I'm pretty angry that people are using tasers on dogs, and I'm pretty angry that people are using come-alongs when they don't know how to use them. Well, excuse me, these are ancillary issues. I'm just trying to figure out what do we do with tank. Okay, so these are ancillary issues. I'm not here to critique training techniques, um, what that, I'm just trying to, um, you, you, you've seen more vicious and dangerous dogs than I have. I mean, you've actually han handled them. Uh, in, in, in your opinion, is, is, is Tank a dangerous dog? I hate to put you on the spot here, but this is a... Well, obviously I, he can be put in a situation where right. he would be. He has, the, he has the ability to, just like they all do, and he's proved that he can be. And my, my concern, I know you don't want to talk about the training stuff, is that with this kind of training, this is not going to resolve. And he's going to keep being forced into into feeling terror and reacting to that. So, uh, your initial statement was that you felt the tank was provoked to this behavior. Do you yeah. still believe that after seeing the yes. video and hearing the answer? Okay. Well, no. This. This. I, it's, actually, she's helping Tank's case. I understand that. But well, and you certainly can talk about this after the hearing. All right. I have to stay focused on this because there's a lot to focus on. Because quite frankly, after having seen this and letting Tank go back with Miss Lee. And Tank finds himself in a stressful situation when Miss Lee can't control him and uh, uh, presses an attack on somebody who gets injured. I'm going to have a lot of explaining to do. We're working on that. Well, and I appreciate that. And, and I appreciate that. And that's. Um, it's never happened before. No, I, I, I get that. But, not, uh, well, Miss Lee, why, why don't you. I need to. I know this is upsetting, and I know you have moved heaven and earth to, to get Tank un, under control. What I need you to do is to learn how to get Tank under control immediately. And that if Tank decides that he's in a stressful situation and that he's going to go after somebody, you will be able to stop it immediately. Yes. 
by not putting him in a situation like that. Of course. And secondly, that you can demonstrate that you can immediately... Of course. I completely control. agree. Control. I think the reason that I was out of control of him in the first place is like what Dan said and what I said, is that he had been living long term in an environment that was a stressful environment and that is what got him to this point. I have taken him out of that environment, so I'm in control of that situation, and I'm continuing to work with Dan personally, who you heard as one of the best dog trainers in the Bay Area for aggressive dogs, just said that he is not a dangerous dog and this is an isolated incident and that will not happen again. Okay. Uh, w when's the next uh, training session with, with Tank schedule? As soon as you guys, as soon as we were kind of waiting for all this to shake out until... But, well, uh, yeah, immediately, today. Okay. Is, is, uh, Sergeant, anything you'd like to add? Um, it, it's, it's hard to watch uh, the video as well for me, uh, editing it and seeing it. I saw it a lot more times than everyone in here making making the video. Um, I do understand there, there are different opinions on, on ways to train, etc. And some dogs react better to certain methods than others, uh, not getting into specifics. But um, I, I just think in the, the bottom line is, and, it's, and it seems to me that Allison is definitely dedicated to Tank um, and doing whatever she can to keep him safe and keep him and, and keep him happy and, and healthy um, she did you know just recently purchase a house which I think is great for for any dog um, and he'll have his own backyard uh, and she's moved out of the noisier kind of busier environment um, I, I think it's really up to Allison whether she wants to continue her dedication to uh, tank and it's a personal decision that you have to make um, He's definitely capable of doing it again. There's no doubt in my mind given the right circumstances uh, It definitely seems like he was very protective of you and you know, he, he could be protecting you from a friend um, It's great if it's the burglar. I'm all for that uh, But if it was your friend and unfortunately it always it seems like mo majority of time it ends up being you know somebody's kid or nephew or something um, that the dog perceives as a threat but if you're willing to uh, take the liability and responsibility um, because you are liable for them, everything that happens. Um, so it is a big responsibility and you seem like a very um, you know, happy person and you seem very, um, I don't see you as an overly dominant, aggressive <laughs> dog handler. Um, and the reason I mention it is because you, you're, uh, you have to make that decision for yourself whether you want to tackle this. It doesn't really seem in your nature to me to be, because I saw from the video, you you appear to be very kind of pulled back and, and reluctant to, to kind of get in there. And so everyone's different. It's yeah. not a good or a bad thing, it's just who you are. So if, that, if you think he's a good fit for you and you want to continue this for the rest of his life, um, I, I think you, you could keep him out of trouble, but it's going to take a lot of restraints yeah. and, and full-time dedication from you to do so, it, to the point where it may alter your, your plans. Yeah, I, it, I understand that. It has altered my plans, but I'm, I don't even bat an eye at moving and spending exorbitant amounts of money on training and dedicating myself to this. I understand that there's things I need to work on, which is why I've gone to the end product training facility. He's helped me immensely understand how to control him and I really do feel like I understand that I have work to do. This was an isolated incident where it was like we said not in a proper training environment. It was you know so moving forward we're going to do all training at his new house which is my new house where he has a yard. I completely understand the work that I'm going to need to put in for the rest of his life and I'm more than willing to do that. Well here's all right and Thank you. Thank you. I, I think, sorry, wait, 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 no, we, we still have something to talk about. Yeah. Now, I can't ignore what I've just seen. I can't ignore what I've just seen. I'd like to take your word that this is an isolated incident. And I applaud you working hard, although I think Sergeant Sadler believes in a different, as long as you're on it with both feet with somebody, that goes in the plus column. Your dog is unpredictable. 
you didn't see this coming. I don't think uh, Mr. Kasarchuk saw this coming, and uh, he, he got he got injured. I can't have anybody in the public being injured. I don't. The days of of um, tank running around free uh, without a muzzle uh, are over. If you want to have tank run around with other people. That's fine, but after watching this, I can't allow it to be without a muzzle. Or he's on a leash. Okay. All right, you don't have to have him a muzzle all the time when he's outside, but he's got to be on a leash. If you take him off the leash, he's got to have a muzzle on. Okay. Forever? <sighs> Nothing's forever. But right now, what I have to decide is whether to make this an order I just want to reiterate the fact that I this truly was an isolated incident. Aaron said it, Dan said it, I said it. I've had him for three years off leash in parks and beaches running around, not one incident, never. Nothing has ever happened at my house, in public, to no one, ever. This was truly a, just a culmination of anxiety in an unfamiliar situation that was not controlled and it will not happen again. Well, it won't happen again because you're going to have him on leash at all times in public. And if you take him off leash and you're going to let him run, he's going to have a muzzle on. My job is to protect the public. Understand. You believe that it's an isolated incident and it's not going to happen again. I understand. In any other county, this would be curtains. This would be absolute curtains for Tank. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Because other counties don't have the latitude that we have here to put the responsibility on you. Okay. All right? And frankly, not to beat you up, but from what I saw in the video, I we got a long way to go as far as you controlling tank. Uh, it, it's, um, I, I didn't see any control there. I, I didn't see any uh, respect of from tank towards you in the video. Now I know things are different in a, in different situations and I and and I and I believe that. But just the evidence that was presented to me today shows me that you don't have control over tank. The tanks running the show and uh the thing that's saving Tank right now is your commitment to make this better, the fact that you're working with the trainer intensely, and, um, but I have responsibility to the public, so I, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not gonna order Tank destroyed. Thank you. Okay, but I have to mull whether Tank is going to be a vicious and dangerous dog and registered as such. If I do that, one of the restrictions is that Lank has, uh, Hank, uh, Tank has to be leashed and muzzled at all times in public. Um, the tank would have to go to a trainer. Um, you'd have to put a sign on your uh, on your new house uh, saying uh, beware of dog. Uh, animal care control would come into a property inspection, but, m but most of these things you've already agreed to do on your own without having to pay the $250 and get the registration uh, of a vicious and dangerous dog. So, uh, The leash and muzzle restriction, leashed at all times in public, muzzled if taken off, and um, until uh, Mr. Parada can convince me that Tank will never be put in a position to be able to do this and that you can safely control Tank, should Tank, like, again, and he stole my thunder, says he, we can't leave it up to Tank to decide when he's going to misbehave or when he's feeling too stressed or when he feels yeah. that we can't, it's not, a, it's up to you. So you have to be the one to put your hand on Tank's collar okay. and stop it immediately. Yes. And so that leash and muzzle restriction that I'm going to write in the order, um, th that's going to be for some time or until Mr. Parada can to let me know that he, he's willing to put his reputation on the line for something like that. But my job is to protect the public. So what I see here is a dog that I, I don't trust. You trust it, Mr. Parada can trust it, but it's going to be leashed at all times in public, and it's if you're going to take it off leash, it's going to have a muzzle, so it has no chance to. Uh, and 
All right, here, here, now I'm, I'm going to amend that to, this is a tough one. This really is a tough one. What I'm going to amend that to is I want uh, Tang to be leashed and muzzled at all times when in public until Mr. Parada contacts Sergeant Hicks and makes a case for, uh, then, then we can divide it up that way. My job is to protect the public. I did not see any, in, yes, yes, you're welcome to come up. Uh, can you use a long line? Is it no. okay to have him 20 feet long? No, no. Does it, it affects his training if he feels like... If it's a training scenario, yeah. you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Except take him out in public and, and run him without a leash or a muzzle. Right, understandable. All right. Uh, okay. In your facility. In your facility. The leash law in San Francisco is what, eight, eight feet? It's a six, it's a six foot. That That is the ordinance anyway in San Francisco. So these people that have these retractable leashes, the dogs go around the corner, kill the cat, and then we're back here. We don't use the retractable leash. Oh, okay. All right. But uh, no, for, for, training, for, for training purposes. We have to call them back and make sure she can control them under different situations. It needs to be some distance. That's where the problem will lie out there with her. So take off. Well, I can't give you permission to do that because it's a, it's a city ordinance. And muzzle, but okay. I can take them out. Can I take them out? Not, I have a kind of dead end at our, where somebody is. It's the public, but nobody's out there. We kind of use it for training. A so. deserted beach. There's no way he's going to be able to learn unless well, you give him the ability. Restrictions only apply in the city and county of San Francisco. Right. I can give you that. Yeah. All right. So, until Mr. Parada gives Sergeant Hicks, I can hold the vicious and dangerous dog order in abeyance and we can take baby steps and we can move back and back and back for it and you're not going to have to register him as a vicious and dangerous dog as long as you promise me right now and until Mr. Parada convinces Sergeant Hicks otherwise who's got to, then got to convince me that uh, uh, a tank will be leashed and muzzled at all times when in public and then we'll work from there. Okay. And that's pretty much everything that, if, if I deemed him vicious and dangerous, that is, are all the restrictions. So if you do this voluntarily, then I don't have to order it. Okay. And then you don't have to register him and pay the $250 fine. All right. So I would rather have you cooperate. And I have to do that for people that aren't as cooperative and, 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 and don't care as much as you do. But I think you care deeply. But until you can show me on video that if Tank abstracts, you got the hand okay. on the collar, you got him okay. butt on rug, uh, <laughs> just like that. Okay. Understood. Yes. Understood. Whenever he's out in public. Now, listen. You got friends coming over to the house, stuff like that. Things, you know, I can't order you to muzzle them in the house or leash them in the house, obviously. But that's where a lot of accidents happen. All right, and Ms. Proud, I'm sure you're familiar with that too. Yeah, right. We're, 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 we're wait for her to get a place so we can start working him there at the house. All right, her. all right. So, yeah. so what we're going to do to protect public safety is she's going to be, Tank's going to be leashed and muzzled at all times in public. We can work on it, and then we're, the next stage is going to be leashed or muzzled. Okay. And then maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, I, I I don't see it's getting much farther than that. I understand. That, all right, I appreciate it. but I I'm going to hold you for your at your word at this because I'm on the hook here now with you because if you let him run around off leash and he sees a horse and we don't know how he reacts to horses and if he attacks the horse, well then the horse owner is going to become looking at me. It's going to look at this video okay. because this is part of the record and we're both going to have a rotten day. All right. I understand. Okay. I okay. Leash to muzzle at all times in public. Work with your trainer. And um, good luck. Thank you. So even if he's leashed, I want to make sure that you 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 do keep him on a short lead. Of course, six foot's too long for me. When no, I walk I my dog, they're right next to me. Yeah, on the, the head leash. collar method that we use, it's literally right oh, here. And, and, and just be aware that a lot of the bites that I run into um, are dogs that are on leash. Okay. Okay. Someone leash walks by leash. that's afraid of dogs. They go ah. And the, the dog gets excited, and he obviously does work up with the stimulus. They're getting excited, so if some kid runs by screaming anywhere that they could physically get into him, um, okay. you know, a bite could result. I wish Tank was a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, but <laughs> he's not. He's a strong dog, and he's bigger. Yes. Um, but if you want to 
go along with the program and keep them leashed and muzzled and um, send me your progress reports, okay? okay? And not to be the heavy, but he's got a rap sheet as a biting dog that has caused injury to a human. Just, okay. all right. And listen, I, I'm gonna end this and not on, a, not on a sour note. Sometimes dogs can't be saved. Just, just can, can, how far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to risk? And uh, no, no one, no one would. Uh, um, well, th these are decisions that you have to make. But, but, but sometimes there is a time that you have to make a, a, a real tough decision. All right, and you'll know it. And it doesn't have to be another bite. But if, if, if there's just no way that you can get Tank under control by yourself, then you're going to have to make a decision. I understand that. Okay. All right. Well, I think we've beaten you up pretty good today. Um, thank you for coming in. But I think this is on a positive note now that uh, we have a course of action. And uh, good luck to all of you involved. And uh, uh, Mr. Kasarchuk, that was amazing. That was amazing. I mean, you, 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 okay, right, okay, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Does anybody else like to say anything on? Yes. Yeah, I just I would just very simply like to add that anyone in these proceedings is very welcome to come to our facility. We use no punitive measures ever to train, and I welcome all of you to come and see if you'd like to. Um, we stand behind our staff, our clients, and these dogs. We work our asses off to save these animals. Um, we do everything from little tiny puppies to dogs that just want to kill people. We've had amazing success, and I welcome all of you to come get involved if you'd like to. In fact, we welcome any suggestions and opinions you guys have. Well, I imagine Sergeant Sadler has a couple of opinions or suggestions, but uh, that, that's up to her. All right. We'll leave it at that. Do you have else? donuts there? <laughs> yeah, oh boy. Me too, actually. Okay, all right. Leashed and muzzled tank will not be a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the com uh, community. And we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Sergeant.